All right. Uh, so Sangamitra and Soumya Khan, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity uh, to talk to all of you. I know there are 500 plus people on this webinar, so it, it feels amazing. Uh, you know, three esteemed speakers before me, and when Uma went one down, Uma actually said everything is covered and there's nothing much to say. Uh, I'm going three down, so I don't know what I'm going to really talk about that has not already been spoken, but I'll definitely try and do justice to share something different. Um, thanks, Uma. Thanks for the thumbs up. Um, you know, uh, TEDx, TEDx as a forum puts a lot of pressure on you because you have 17 minutes to talk and you need to very impactfully make your point across. And uh, there also you have a lot of speakers going back to back. But Soumya has very clearly told me, Sahil, you have 10 minutes. Uh, so uh, the pressure is, in a way, even more. But given that so much has already been covered, I think so 10 minutes should be good enough for me, and I will respect boundaries and timelines. So everyone has spoken about giving an acronym a full form for COVID, new normal, work-life balance, digitalization. Uh, Uma said, you know, like we're seeing on this webinar, you don't need to have dealers, retailers. You can have 500 people virtually connected, do a great uh, launch, so on and so forth. Um, I think let's take a couple of minutes to just sit back, pause, and reflect. Why is it so difficult to do the right thing? And when I sit back, pause, and reflect, I summarize and categorize the current situation into four buckets. The first bucket, and let's start from the not so positive, is that people are losing jobs. People have lost jobs. The second is people's jobs are intact, but they have faced salary reductions. That's the second bucket. The third bucket is people have got their same salary as last year, but they've not got increments for the year, they've not got bonuses, so on and so forth. And the fourth bucket, which is the most positive and optimistic bucket, is where certain uh, organizations have decided to give increments, give promotions, and give bonuses, irrespective of COVID. Now, if I look at these four buckets and I try and draw an analysis, I'm really sitting back and saying, none of us, are qualified to stand in judgment of which bucket is right or which bucket is wrong. But one thing we all know, as a matter of fact, is that everybody is watching. The whole world is watching which bucket are you in. Are you sacking people? Are you not giving? reductions are you giving reductions which is the second bucket the third is about increments and the third is about actually giving bonuses now the world is watching and at this point in time the world may not say anything because it can impact them in in a manner in which they either talk or don't talk and therefore they are silent but let's remember one thing in situations like these which are absolutely unprecedented there is a great amount of fear and anxiety in people's minds, irrespective of which bucket they are in. And I think all these years, we have seen wonderful institutions, um, various organizations put up their values on their walls to say, these are our values. These are our organization values. I think this is the time when each of those values that were on the wall actually need to come into action. This is the time when people are sitting in their homes and looking up to leadership, looking up to leaders to say, hey, you spoke about that value in the last town hall. You believe these are the values of our organization. Why is it so difficult to do the right thing? And I think this is the real time and the real test for each one of us to put those values where they belong. It is very easy to put the blame and say, leaders need to do that, other people need to do this. But I think it is extremely important that change starts with yourself. And therefore, I want to leave all the wonderful people on this webinar with four things that I very firmly believe in. Number one, I'm going to talk about the A, B, C, and D of values. So the first, of course, is be a very, very strong advocate of your values. 
what is it that you stand for? Do you believe that whatever is happening around you or within you or just in the entire ecosystem, is that right? What is it that you stand for? The second is about being a believer, but more important, which is the B, is the behavior of those values. Just putting them on a lovely PowerPoint or framing them on your wall is not going to help. We need to ensure that starting from the self, are we really behaving in sync with those values? The C is, of course, championing. Can we really use an opportunity like this, which to the world may be an adversity, but to us is an opportunity to champion those values, to convince people what they stand for, and to do the right thing, because that will really hold us in good stead. And finally, of course, A, B, and C is fine, but the last, which is the D, is to defend our values. I think many a times we don't do a very good job of defending because we go with the herd. We go with what is comfortable, what is easy, what is not very, very controversial, what will not get us a lot of brickbacks. And therefore, can we really defend our values to stand up for what I can do? And when I can do it, and you can do it, and all of us can do it, I think collectively, we all will do the right thing. And whether it is HR or not HR, whether it's a student or an experienced professional, I think this is the time to pause and reflect, to sit back and say, adversity has hit us. Let's find the opportunity and let's do the right thing for ourselves and for our people because they are watching. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I wanted to keep it crisp, but if you open up towards questions at the end, I would love to make this a lot more engaging for everyone. But thank you so much for the opportunity.